Hi and welcome to Tribe's Toolbox where you will find tips, tricks and stories about black women for black women. I'm Janoe Simon, co-founder of Beauty. And I'm Naomi Simon, also co-founder of Beauty. An online Afro hair and beauty cosmetic shop dedicated to providing the most healthy products to our community and to improving the experience of buying Afro hair and beauty cosmetics for the black woman. And so we're going to help you in trying to also launch your own business. So when starting a business, the most important thing is to have the minimum viable product. So for us, that was the website, that was just having our products on that website so consumers can purchase any products on our website. When you go onto our site now, you'll see that you can chat to us live, there's video consultations, there's all sorts of widgets and, and gadgets in, embedded in there. But when we started, it was literally all, all the consumer could do was buy products and that was it. And that's important for you to be able to test your, your product. So just start with the most basic product that will allow you to test your, your idea. So once we established our minimum viable product, our website, we then wanted to get out there in the community, we wanted to meet our customers and we really wanted to engage with women and men who didn't know much about their hair, didn't know much about what products to buy um, and just have a lot of concerns and questions. So we started to do pop-up shops. So we've been all around London doing pop-up shops, giving advice, giving consultations. We learn what the consumer wants. So for you, whatever your community is, so for us it was Afro Hair and Beauty, so we went to like Afro Hair and Beauty show, Curly Fest, you'll see us at a load of different events. Whatever your community is, penetrate it, go after the people that you want to target and make sure you know as much as you can about your audience. When we met a lot of the customers, our potential customers, they often had similar or the same questions. So this led us into think, well, there needs to be consultation on hair. So that's how we developed our services from products to consultation. And then we developed this further into market places. So we have met a lot of black owners um, in the hair industry who have amazing products. Um, and we really wanted to become the Amazon of the Afro hair industry. So we have a marketplace where um, sellers are able to sell their products and then you're also able to get in touch with us um, about these products and what they do um, and then any information or questions you have on these products. So that's how we've developed our services. And as we've mentioned earlier about the minimum viable product, it's always great to start with that and then keep developing your services and products based on the wants and the needs of your clients. There's several ways you can do this. One of the easiest ways is questionnaires. So develop a questionnaire and send it out. You can use social media these days. When we did ours, because people are so passionate about what we do, there was about 100 responses within three hours or something ridiculous like that. So hopefully you're building your target audience in some way, shape or form already. It doesn't necessarily have to be that your product's launched and so that you can be asking people questions and you have a community to validate your idea before you start building your idea. What we found has been, has developed our business is not us saying, oh, let's try this or let's try this just like, a, like ideas. It's, we're trying to solve a problem. So we'll think, oh, oh, this customer and these groups of customers are really suffering with this problem. How are we going to solve it? So make sure that your business is driven by solving a problem. Don't try and create one, then solve it because it, it may be harder to get people to buy into your idea. We have a technology background, so we are quite good on the technical side, um, but there are aspects that we won't have experience in. So it's about having that network to say, okay, who can we call for social media? Who can we call to do our Google ads? 
So just really building up that network, going to industry events, going to networking events, there's loads on shubs.com, there's loads on Eventbrite. So just do some research into different networking events. And also whilst you're at these industry events, have a game plan. So what we do, if we're not exhibiting, still to this day, and also especially before we started, we go around and we just start conversations and collect people's email addresses and say that we're going to sign you up to be part of our movement beauty now we have a huge um, mailing list just from doing that alone there's so many ways to get people to buy into what you're doing and then to just keep on reeling them in so have a game plan when you go to industry events. Don't just turn up and be like, hey, I'm here. Um, what do you want to get out of it? Why are you going to the event? Um, and then make that happen. The last thing I'll say on network is use Twitter. So Twitter is good because you can DM people and reach out to people very easily. And it's a platform that's used for conversations more so than I would say Facebook or Instagram. Just tweet them. Um, I'm interested in what you're doing. Can I, eat, can I grab your email? Um, and more than likely people will say, yeah, sure. Um, so use Twitter to reach out to people that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. And that's the great thing about that tool. It's very powerful if you use it in the right way to connect with people. Use as many social media platforms as you can, as all of them have different usage. Um, and you can really make the most out of the different uses. So as Naomi said, Twitter is for more conversation. Instagram is really good for after industry events. Um, so you can use in your stories where you have been, where you are. You can keep your stories on your page so customers or potential customers can see where you have been. And if there's a pattern of where you will be, they'll know where to find you customers are more likely to purchase a product if they see their favorite influencer using and purchasing that product so contact influencers contact youtubers and contact bloggers yeah definitely and as we were saying before the mailing list is important because the conversion rate for emails uh, and email marketing is a lot higher than social media. Uh, for us, we found that to be the case. And so make sure, again, you're still continuing to build your mailing list. And also to follow on, on what Janere was saying about influencers and social media, one of the, the greatest forms of marketing is if you can get just normal people to buy into your brand, then their friends will see that, that they are buying from you and they trust their friends. And so their friends will also follow and also buy into your brand. So it's not just about the big influencers, it's the micro influencers as well. Generating capital is a big one and it could be a workshop in itself but we're just gonna give you a few points to help you along the way. So how are you gonna go about setting up the business if you don't have the capital yourself? So number one is the most obvious, family and friends. Family and friends are most easy to convince because they know you, so they will trust you. So you can go ahead and ask your family and friends and if they have the, the money and the means, then hopefully they will be able to help you. So let's go on to the less obvious ones. The first one being seed funding. Seed funding is essentially asking an investor to fund or to invest in your idea. What seed funders are usually looking for is that you can prove that there is a want for your idea. So that is why building your network and pre-orders and developing your, your, your network and, and your customer base is so important. Seed funders also don't like to be cold called, so you need to add seed funders into your network. And you can do that by going to startup events, there's many, you can check out Google Campus, check out other co-working spaces which will allow you access to potential investors. The third one is loans and grants. If your business is sustainable there are loads of grants for sustainable businesses and sustainable startups so just google um, grants and then find ones that you think your business could potentially fall into you need to make sure you have a business plan a lot of startup companies try to get around it by doing a half 
kind of business plan. Which we also do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but make sure that you have a finish to end business yeah. plan. That's not always just for the investor or who you're seeking money from, but it's also for you to know your strategy and where you're going and where your business is going. So have a business plan um, if you're looking to go to others to um, invest in your business. Yeah, if you're going to approach people but and also update it as your idea develops. For us, and for a lot of people, it's important that when they purchase something that they're helping more than just themselves. I think in 2018, people want to are more aware of social issues going on across the world. So it's more of an incentive for them to invest in your business if they know that if they help you, you're going to help a wider community. So that's why for us, we decided to help African-Caribbean children. That's what our customers are passionate about. That's what we're passionate about. And and so that's why we've chosen to sponsor the education of African Caribbean children um, to go to to have supplementary education and access to maths and English and tuition. So have a think about how your business can affect a wider community other than just yourself. Thanks for joining us for the episode of Tribes Toolbox. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment down below and tell us what you've learned from this video. And don't forget to check out the other videos in the Tribe Toolbox.